Hey guys, today we're looking at the blood. Usually in the study menu, it's included in the cardiovascular system, but I have seen questions on T's just about blood. So I want to have a separate lesson to focus a few important things about blood. Now let's look at the composition of blood first. The blood has two main components. The first component is plasma, which is the kind of liquid part of blood. So you can imagine plasma has mostly water, but there are also dissolved components such as nutrients, you know, glucose, uh, electrolytes. There are also proteins in plasma, transport proteins like alb albumin, uh, immune proteins, uh, which we'll mention in the immune system. The hormones are also in the plasma part and they're transported by blood throughout the body. The next main component of blood is the kind of like the solid part. And we call this part formed elements. Basically, they refer to the different blood cells. Erythrocytes are red blood cells. Leukocytes are white blood cells. And platelets are not cells in a strict sense because they are only cellular fragments, but they do perform important functions uh, as part of the blood. Now, for the formed elements, you do need to know the other name for red blood cells and the white blood cells, because on T's, the questions may uh, very likely use erythrocytes and leukocytes instead of red blood cells and white blood cells. So you need to know what they refer to. Now, in this picture, I just kind of want to show you the different components. Usually, if you have whole blood, you can centrifuge the blood to separate out the different components. Because of the different weight, the lighter component is going to be uh, in the top layer and you know, heavy components will be toward the bottom. So you can see plasma, because it's mostly water, it's very light, it's going to end up in the top layer and plasma has this kind of light yellow color. The buffy coat, very thin layer in the middle, that's usually white blood cells and platelets. And then the bottom layer, that's going to be red blood cells because they're loaded with proteins, so they're pretty heavy. All right. Now, about the formed element, I have this kind of huge table. You can see it, you know, it's on two slides, but you do not need to know all this information in the table. I just put it out there as a reference. If you need more details, if you're interested in a specific type of cell, you can look at this table. But um, you do not need to know to memorize all this information. You only need to know the functions for each group. So you need to know the function for red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets in general. All right, now let's look at erythrocytes or red blood cells. The main function, you already know, probably transport oxygen and carbon dioxide between the tissues and lungs. So that's the main job for red blood cells. And that's important job because all the cells need oxygen um, they also need to get rid of carbon dioxide. So that's all kind of, they all rely on red blood cells to do the job. For white blood cells or leukocytes, they function in body defense and protection, right? They're a part of the immune system. So that's the only thing you need to know. They function in body defense against foreign substances. If you see a question, uh, which gives you a scenario, you know, this patient has an uh, uh, infection and let's say the patient has a, a, a blood count, which uh, formed elements or which blood cell do you expect to increase? So the answer would be leukocytes, right? Because of the infection, your body will re in response make more leukocytes to fight the infection. So the uh, white blood cell count will increase. All right, now there are five types of leukocytes. So there are three here and two on the next slide, but you do not need to know their individual names or their individual function. We may mention a few in the later immune system, in the immune system, but for now, you do not need to know all those details. Again, only know the general function for leukocytes. Okay, last one, platelets. So platelets are cellular fragments, but they are important in the clotting process. So when there is a tissue injury, let's say there is um, blood vessel rupture or damage in the inner lining, the platelets will kind of aggregate and they will form a um, kind of temporary plug to block the leak, to seal the leak. 
so that you don't lose blood. So that's the main function for platelets. All right, now let's look at red blood cell. You need to know how these red blood cells tr uh, transport oxygen. And that's all due to a very important protein called the hemoglobin. So red blood cells do not have a lot of other you know, components inside because they're loaded with hemoglobin. And it's hemoglobin that can bind to oxygen and carbon dioxide and allow red blood cells to transport those molecules. Right? Now, one thing about hemoglobin is that you need to know iron is an important component for hemoglobin. So the, this particular protein has four chains, right? And you can see each chain actually has an iron right here, right? So if your body does not have enough iron, then that deficiency could lead to anemia, right? Because you can't synthesize enough hemoglobin because you don't have the, one of the raw materials needed, which is iron. Let's look at some of the blood diseases related to red blood cells. Uh, first one, iron deficiency anemia. We already talked about that. The second one is sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is caused by a genetic mutation. And the mutation happens to the gene that codes for hemoglobin. So because of the mutation, um, patients with a sickle cell anemia are going to produce abnormal hemoglobin, which leads to this weird sickle-shaped red blood cells. Now the problem is these sickle-shaped uh, red blood cells they tend to be very sticky. They like to clump. So they often kind of clump at small uh, blood vessels, such as capillaries, and then they block the blood flow. So you can see right here, there's very little blood can go through, right? So all the tissues and cells downstream of the blood flow does not get enough oxygen, and that could lead to uh, excruciating pain in some of the sickle cell anemia patients. Right, the third condition is about red blood cell count, right? the number of red blood cells in your blood. If you have a very low red blood cell count, that could lead to anemia. Right? Basically, anemia is a condition where the body has a very low blood oxygen carrying capacity. And this could be caused by many reasons. Right? For example, if your body does not make enough iron, that could lead to anemia. Or if you have blood loss, that could also lead to anemia. Now, on the other hand, if your body has too many red blood cells, this condition is called a polycythemia, right? You have too much red blood cells. Uh, so you can see in this diagram, when you look at anemia, see the, the volume of red blood cells is much lower than the normal condition, right? I mean, polycythemia, that's a lot higher than the normal condition. Now, we haven't talked about the cause for polycythemia yet. Now, this could do to, uh, again, many reasons. Uh, one thing that can cause polycythemia is blood doping. Blood doping, you probably have heard of this, right? The athletes kind of cheat by taking out blood and then uh, putting the blood back right before the race. So this way, their body has more red blood cells, right? Uh, higher oxygen carrying capacity so the tissues and cells can get more oxygen so they can perform better. So that's kind of how they cheat. But this blood doping, which leads to polycythemia, can be also dangerous because if your blood has too many red blood cells, this can increase the blood viscosity. Viscosity, basically it makes the blood kind of very thick so it flows slowly, very kind of sluggishly, this could cause a problem, right? Because it puts a lot of pressure on your heart to pump the blood, to move the blood. Sometimes a polycythemia can be a normal condition, normal response to environmental factors. For example, if someone moves to high altitude areas, you know, high altitude areas have thinner air, right? So that's less oxygen level. So in response, the body is going to make more red blood cells to continue to meet the oxygen demands by the body. So that will increase your red blood cell count. But usually that's a normal condition. Okay. Oh, I forgot to delete this. Haha. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, just ignore that. 
Now, the last blood condition we're going to look at is white blood cell count. Now, this is related to leukocytes. The first condition is called a leukocytosis. That's when the body has too high of red blood cell count. Now, this could definitely caused by infection. Like we said earlier, infection is usually reflect reflected by an increase in white blood cell count. Okay, and that condition is called leukocytosis. Second condition is the opposite, leukopenia. Penia means poverty. So that means you do not have enough leukocytes. Um, sometimes the drugs can cause local, uh, leukopenia, uh, for example, some anti-cancer drugs can definitely decrease the level of uh, white blood cells. The very last condition, leukemia, this is something that everybody is pretty familiar with. This is uh, you know, basically blood cancer. Right? It's char characterized by uncontrolled proliferation of white blood cells. It has too many abnormally high levels of uh, uh, white blood cells, and that really disrupts the functions for other blood cells. I have a diagram right here. Normally, normally, in you know this particular size of field under the microscope, you should not have this many lymphocytes. No. So there's a just the, the number is just too high. So this is a, someone that has chronic uh, leukemia. Uh, lymphocytic that means the leukemia is caused by uncontrolled proliferation of lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are one of the groups of the five leukocytes. Now let's look at some uh, practice problems. Number one, which of the following conditions are related to the dysfunction of the red blood cells? If you need a little bit of time to think about this question, just pause the video before I reveal the answer. Now this question asks about red blood cells, right? So there could be multiple answers. Now polycythemia, definitely yes, right? Because that's when you have too many red blood cells in the blood. Stroke, not really. Stroke is about the blood vessels, right? So maybe there's a blockage in the blood vessel where there's a rupture, and usually uh, these two conditions happen in an artery that supplies blood to your brain cells, right? It could be uh, one of the cerebral arteries. Anemia, yes, that's when you have a very low blood cell count, right? Low, and this is high. Okay. Myocardial infarction, no, that's basically means a heart attack, heart, oops, heart attack. So that's about the heart, not about the red blood cells. Next one, hypertension. This is a high blood pressure, right? So this is about the vascular system in general. It's not about just red blood cells. So no, that's not it. Leukemia. Now, leukemia is a condition about blood cells, but it's about a red blood cells, right? It has nothing to do with red blood cells. So that's not the correct answer. So correct answer is A and C. Number two, which of the following is the iron-containing protein in red blood cells? That's going to be hemoglobin, right? The protein that transports oxygen and some carbon dioxide. Number three, infection is likely to result in infection that involves protection and the defense. So that involves a white blood cell. And infection is going to uh, stimulate the body to make more white blood cells to fight the infection. So that's going to be elevated white blood cell count. There you go. Good job, guys. You completed the blood. Again, if you think the video is helpful, let me know by subscribing, leaving a comment, and giving the video a thumbs up. Good job.